4. Regeneration is expressed by being quickened. As there is a quickening time in natural generation, so there is in regeneration. You hath he quickened, Ephesians 2 verse 1. Previous to regeneration, men are dead while they live, although corporally alive, are morally dead, dead in a moral sense as to spiritual things, in all the powers and faculties of their souls. They have no more knowledge of them, affection for them, will to them, or power to perform them, than a dead man has with respect to things natural. But in regeneration, a principle of spiritual life is infused. That is a time of life when the Lord speaks life to them and produces it in them. Christ is the resurrection and the life unto them, or raises them from death of sin to a life of grace. And the spirit of life from Christ enters into them. Regeneration is a passing from death to life. It is a principle of spiritual life implanted in the heart, in consequences of which a man breathes in a spiritual sense. Where there is breath, there is life. God breathed into Adam the breath of life, and he became a living soul, or a living person, and breathing again. So the Spirit of God breathed on dry bones, and they live. Breathe and breathe again. Prayer is a spiritual breath of a regenerate man. Behold, he prayeth, is observed of Saul when regenerated, who just before had been breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of Christ. A regenerate man breathes in prayer to God and pants after him, after more knowledge of him in Christ, after communion with him, after the discoveries of his love, particularly after pardoning grace and mercy. And sometimes these breathings and desires are only expressed by sighs and groans, yet these are a sign of life. If a man groans, it is plain he is alive. There are, in a regenerate man, which shows that he is made alive, cravings for spiritual food. As soon as an infant is born, it shows motions for its mother's milk after the breast. So newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that they may grow thereby. They have their spiritual senses exercised about spiritual objectives. They have what answers to the senses in animal life. Their seeing and hearing as before observed. And also their feeling, they feel the burden of sin on their consciences, the workings of the Spirit of God in their hearts, as well as handle Christ and the word of life, which makes in a plain case that they are alive. A dead man feels nothing. They have a spiritual taste or gust of spiritual things, sweeter to their taste than honey or the honeycomb. They sit under his shadow with pleasure, and his fruit, the blessings of his grace, are sweet unto their tastes. They taste that the Lord is gracious and invite others to taste and see also how good he is. They savour the things which be of God and not of men. Christ and his grace are savoury to them. His robe of righteousness and garments of salvation smell delightful as myrrh. Song Solomon 1.3, Psalms 45 verse 8. And these spiritual senses and the exercises of them in them show them to be alive or born again. Such persons live a life of faith. They live by faith upon it, but on Christ, the object of it, they grow up unto their head, from whom they receive nourishment, and so increase with the increase of God, which is an evidence of life. In a word, they live a new and another life than they did before, not to themselves, nor to the lusts of men, but to God and to Christ, who died for them and rose again. They walk in the newness of life. 5. Regeneration is signified by Christ being formed in the heart. Galatians 4.19 His image is stamped in regeneration. Not the image of the first Adam, but the second Adam. For the new man is after the image of him who has a nude created it, which is the image of Christ, to be conformed to which God's elect are predestined, and which takes place in regeneration. Romans 8.29 Colossians 3.10 The graces of Christ, as faith and hope and love, are wrought in the hearts of regenerated persons, and soon appear there. Yea, Christ himself lives in them. Not I, says the Apostle, but Christ lives in me. He dwells by faith there. Christ and the believer 
mutually dwell in each other. 6. Regeneration is said to be a partaking of the divine nature, 2 Peter 1, four, Not of the nature of God essentially considered. A creature cannot partake of the divine essence or have that communicated to it. This would be to deify man. The divine perfections, many of them, are utterly incommunicable as eternity, immensity, nor of the divine nature or of it in such a sense as Christ is a partaker of it by the personal or hypostatical union of the two natures in him, so that the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily in him. But in regeneration there is that wrought in the soul which bears a resemblance to the divine nature in spiritual holiness, goodness, kindness, and therefore is so called. 7. There are also several terms or words by which the grace of regeneration is expressed, as by grace itself. Not as that signifies the love and favour of God towards his people, or the blessings of grace bestowed upon them, but internal grace, the work of grace in the heart, and which consists of the various graces of the Spirit implanted there, as faith, hope, love, such as are begotten again, are begotten to a lively hope, and have it, and believe in the Son of God, and love him that begot and him that is begotten, 1 Peter 1.3, 1, 1 John 5.1. 1. It is called Spirit. John 3.6. From this author, the Spirit of God, and from its seat, the Spirit of man, and from its nature, which is spiritual and denominates men spiritual men, it is also signified by seed, 1 John 3.9. Whosoever is born of God, his seed remaineth in him, which is the principle of grace, infused in regeneration, and as seed contains in it virtually all that after proceeds from it, the blade, stalk, ear, full corn in the ear, so the principle of grace implanted in the heart seemingly contains all the grace which afterwards appear, and all the fruit effects, acts, and exercise of it. 2. The springs and causes of regeneration. Efficient Moving, meritorious, and instrumental. First, the efficient cause of it, who is not man, but God. One, first, not man. He cannot regenerate himself. His case and the nature of things itself show it, and it is indeed denied of him. The case in which men before regeneration are plainly show that it is not, and cannot be of themselves. They are quite ignorant of the thing itself. Regeneration is one and a principal one of the things of the Spirit of God, and which a natural man cannot discern and understand. Let him have what share he may have of natural knowledge, as Nicodemus, a master in Israel, and yet said, How can these things be? And a man cannot be the author of it, of which he has no knowledge, nor did men previous to regeneration see any need of it, as these who think themselves whole see no need of a physician nor make use of any, and who reckon themselves rich and stand in no need of nothing, as not of righteousness, so not of repentance, and if not of repentance, then not of regeneration. And whatsoever notion they may have of it, what others say concerning it, they have no inclination, nor desire, nor will to it, till God works in them both to will and to do. The bias of their minds is another way. Yea, Their carnal minds are enmity to it. They mock at it, and count it all dreams and enthusiasm. And had they any disposition of mind to it, which they have not, they have no power to affect it. They can do nothing, not the least thing of a spiritual kind, and much less perform such a work as this. This is not by might or power of men, but by the Spirit of the Lord of hosts, to all which may be added, and which makes it impracticable, is that men are dead in trespasses and sins, and can no more quicken themselves than a dead man can, as even might Lazarus have raised himself from the dead, and the dry bones in Ezekiel's vision have quickened themselves and lived.